This is just getting out of control. All kind of love is blinding us. It's like we stay around. So this is what the beans, this is what they look like. So it looks like they've definitely been off gassing a little bit. So. so I'm not entirely sure what to do. Should I like drain the water out, put some new water in and then cook it? So maybe you guys can let me know in the comment box below. What do I do now? But I think what I'll do is I'll just empty the water out, put some new water in, let it cook in the Instant Pot for a bit. Um, I'll look up the cooking time in the little book here. So maybe it'll be like 15 or 20 minutes because they're already soaked. Then we'll be good to go. We'll have some black beans. I'm gonna add in some chili powder, some oregano, maybe some other spices as well, just to give it some more flavor. So black beans, if they're soaked, cooking time, uh, 10 to 15 minutes. So we'll definitely try that out and see what happens. I don't know how much water to put in here, but I'll just kind of like fill it to above the, the top level and maybe a little bit more, uh, maybe like an inch or so above the actual level of the beans and try that out. So I'm just gonna throw in some random stuff. So chili powder, throw in some organic onion powder as well. Then a little bit of parsley, just mix this around. We'll just cook on 15 minutes and see how they turn out after that. Hi there. Um, I just wanted to call and see how my camera's doing or what needs to be fixed on it. Let's see, uh, take a look at your uh, Canon camera. Uh, there's a short to the main board on the camera. That's why the camera's not. There's a loose screw floating around inside the camera. Okay. Uh, we need to go through and uh, replace the main circuit board, replace some blown fuses. Uh, clean to adjust the connectors, 175 labor and 120 parts. Right. Uh, let's see the, the fuses we have in stock. The main board is back where a tough one's with Canon right now. Okay. Subtract in the 45 and 3 page, you're looking about 250 additional to repair. 250? Okay. All right, so it's going to be about $300 to fix the camera. Um, which actually isn't that bad, uh, considering it's a $900 camera, so it'd just be a lot cheaper to obviously get it fixed. Uh, the problem is that it's going to take a few weeks, so the few weeks is more of an issue to me than the actual cost of it. So I guess in the meantime we can use the 5D, use the GoPro, and use Hannah's camera uh, when she gets back from Mexico, just in the meantime until it gets fixed. That's the thing with a lot of like, electronics today, is that things are kind of like, you know, cell phones, printers, computers, laptops, etc. They're not necessarily designed to last your entire lifetime. They're kind of designed to last, you know, a good amount of time. And then once it basically fails, usually a lot of these electronics are, it's way too expensive to get them fixed. You wouldn't take your $50 printer and go get it fixed, right? You just go out and buy a new one. And so that's what cyclical consumption is all about. So I'm really glad that we can get it fixed just because then it's like one less item, one less electronic that has precious metals in it that has to be dumped into a trash bin. So for the recipe photos for the Instant Pot recipe book, I was really inspired by this one photo, this one free photo on unsplash.com, and I'll put it up here. And I'm just kind of like really inspired by kind of like the wood table that this photo was taken on. So I really kind of want to mimic that and create a background that is kind of like that kind of like old wood, that old dark wood pattern and have a lot of the photos for the recipe book taken up against that. So there's actually a really cool tutorial on, online that talks about making basically a two foot by two foot basically background of wood just using some planks that you can get at Home Depot, gluing them together in a proper way and then staining the wood. So that's what I'm gonna work on today. For breakfast kind of lunch, some white rice, which I just made in the Instant Pot, and then gonna try out some of these black beans that I made and use up the rest of the corn chowder here. So I was definitely watching uh, Jill McKeever's YouTube channel, so it's called Simple Daily Recipes, and a lot of her recipes are, are Instant Pot based. And when she makes beans, she puts in liquid smoke. So I think that's something that I'm gonna try getting next, and when I make my next batch of beans or pinto beans or refried beans or something like that, I'm gonna throw in some liquid smokes and really see how that uh, affects the flavor of it. I think it's I think it's really cool that you can do beans at home instead of having to buy canned beans or canned refried beans. You can do all of it from home in this thing. I think I think that's honestly really really cool. <laughs> Still have some leftover red onions, just gonna throw that in there with it. And then I think I'm gonna do 
Frank's buffalo hot sauce on top and just like devour it. You're my poison and you're my cure. Uh, just before I head off to Home Depot, I just wanted to quickly talk about bike security. So it's something that's obviously super important, especially when you have an expensive road bike and you're locking it up at of grocery stores and just any type of store in general. Hannah and I, we looked at like getting insurance for our bikes and for the overall cost, it would end up being around um, about $45, $50 a month. And it's not that like it's like a terrible idea to have something like bicycle insurance, but at the same time, instead of spending, you know, $50 a month on insurance, I could just, you know, secure my bike in a way that I know it's just not going to get stolen. So I went ahead and bought a new bike lock for, this thing was only $60. It's going to be used in conjunction with the other bike locks that we have. I'm only going to use two locks, I'm not going to use three locks now. But the main thing with this one here, um, this, so this is called the hip lock light. This is not a paid endorsement. I didn't get this for free. Just ordered it on Amazon. What I really like about this one is obviously because the, the chain is actually really nice. It's like a really, really thick chain, but it also is the first bicycle lock that is actually designed to be worn. And if you're always carrying your bike locks like in your backpack or on your bike, it can be really annoying. So what's really nice about this, here, I will demonstrate. So what's awesome with this one here is it's actually designed to kind of like be worn almost like a seatbelt. So you put it on and you just loop it around. And then you just wear it around your midsection like, like a belt. And what's really nice, so it's only like two pounds. It doesn't really, it doesn't add any weight to your shoulders or to your backpack. Um, you don't have to put any mounts on your bike. So just for commuting and for getting around and having a good bike lock that's just like sitting around your waist, super, super handy. So I'm going to use this one with one of the D-locks as well. These are extremely tough to get through and with a D-lock as well, that's going to be around the frame. Like a bike thief is just going to kind of be like, mm, I don't know if it's necessarily worth it to try and get the bike because there's literally two styles of locks on it. Something that I just noticed uh, as I was going here, there's a little bracket here that fits on the rear wheel and that bracket will not fit onto our new bikes, which kind of sucks. So that basically means that we're gonna have to keep at least one of our old bikes um, just so that we can use it with the baby cart. Good thing to know before we actually sold any of the bikes, so we still have both of them. You're an ocean with no show and I'm drowning Drowning for you mm. Cause all kind of love Is blind us It's like we stare right into the sun The damage is done What have we been? So we got the hip lock light Going through the wheel and through the frame And then the D-lock just going through the frame Girl, Even though we Essentially what I'm going to make here is a background or a surface in order to shoot pictures on. So these are two foot pieces of hobby wood. So on the, on the, on the bottom side that's facing the carpet, it's going to be one surface. On the other side, when you flip it over, is going to be another surface. So in essence, what you have here is you have two different surfaces in order to shoot photos on. So this is essentially, this is gonna be kind of like the backdrop for a lot of the photos. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just lay these out as they are, and I'm just literally gonna like pour a whole bunch of glue on them, and then they'll just stick together, right? So once they're glued up, then what I can do is I can actually take some stain and just stain each side um, because I want a darker color. So this is a really easy way of creating essentially like a backdrop or almost like a table, like, in, like a wood table without actually having a wood table. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Bubba, watch out. <laughs> you want the ball? Go get it. <laughs> Give me the ball. Kind of funny, I take these guys to the dog park. They sit around, they just smell and poop and pee. And then they come home, and then it's like a puppy royal rumble. So for dinner tonight, it's not gonna be anything new and exciting. Red lentil chili, 
refried beans, and we also have some black beans here. So I got my choice, Hannah's sweet potato hummus. Dinner's ready, a nice easy day of doing some work. And uh, tomorrow's gonna be a little bit more fun, driving all the way down to Bisbee to uh, visit Karen and her husband. So that's gonna be an exciting little trip. So make sure you check out tomorrow's vlog. This is just getting out of control. All kind of love is blinding us. It's like we stare 